एवरीवन वेलकम टू बायोलॉजी विद एमजे दिस इज एमजे योर एंथुसियास्टिक गाइड सो वेदर यू आर अ नीट एस्पिरेंट और सिंपली अ बायोलॉजी लवर दिस वीडियो इज फिल्ड विद वैल्यूएबल इनसाइट्स एंड नॉलेज ओके सो स्टे ट्यून टिल द एंड ऑफ द वीडियो एंड इफ यू हैवेंट ऑलरेडी प्लीज सब्सक्राइब टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल एंड प्रेस द बेल आईकॉन सो दैट यू नेवर मिस एन अपडेट रिमेंबर टू लाइक comment and share this video with your friends okay so let's get to the video hello students welcome back to my channel so we are continuing with our chapter plant kingdom which is the chapter 3 of class 11 biology and in this video we are going to cover the topic bryophytes okay for the previous lecture from this chapter you can check out the link here okay in that lecture we have covered about algae and the systems of classification and also the branches of taxonomy okay and i would suggest you to stay tuned till the end of this video because at the end we have covered the last 14 years neat pyqs as well okay so let's begin with the lecture so introducing bryophytes what are bryophytes bryophytes are non vascular plants they are terrestrial plants that means that they occur on the land of moist habitats which means that they are present in those locations where water is seen where water is present in the in in the presence of moisture they grow okay non vascular means that they do not contain the vascular tissue vascular tissue is absent in bryophytes what is vascular tissue vascular tissue comprises of xylem and phloem okay it is absent in bryophytes that is why they are called non vascular plants and just for your knowledge uh, we would study about this later on but for now just note the point that pteridophytes were the first terrestrial vascular cryptogams or the first terrestrial vascular plants to possess xylem and phloem okay so as you can see in the background image this is the image of bryophytes only see bryophytes usually form these green colored carpet like structures on the floor on the forest floor on the soil okay so they are terrestrial plants of moist habitats and they are non vascular now they are known as the amphibians of the plant kingdom what are amphibians amphibians are organisms that can live on both the land and in water now this frog here is like stressed its position is in danger because bryophytes are claiming the title oh we are the amphibians of the plant kingdom and he does not want to give his title away but why are the no why are they known as the amphibians of the plant kingdom <laughs> he is asking believe me it is he has the same question so he is saying believe me i have the same question so we'll get to the answer here so the bryophytes are known as the amphibians of the plant kingdom because they can live on the soil they can live in soil they are growing on the land right you saw in the image earlier they were growing on the soil surface they can live in soil but they are dependent on water for the process of sexual reproduction in order to perform sexual reproduction they need water it is water is essential for them in sexual reproduction so please remember this point the question has also appeared uh, from this point in the previous year questions from the neat exam so note here it will help you at the end so that is why they are known as the amphibians of the plant kingdom because yeah, here land is also playing role and water is also playing role and what are amphibians by definition the organisms that can live on both land and in water so technically the definition is that but here in what sense they are being called as amphibians because they can live in soil that is on the land and they are dependent on water for sexual reproduction now bryophytes are divided into two categories that is liverworts and mosses which are found commonly growing in moist shaded areas in the hills see everywhere wherever bryophytes would be seen the areas would be moist because water is so essential for them to reproduce sexually so they are found commonly this is their habitat they are found growing in the hills in the moist shaded areas okay 
So as you can see here, this is a liver wart and this is a moss. So liver warts are in the name you can see liver wart is mentioned. So their shape resembles that of a liver. That is why liver warts are called liver warts. Okay. And here are the mosses. Mosses look something like this. Okay. Moving forward. Okay. So moving before going ahead, do not forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook and Telegram. The links to all these three platforms have been provided in the description below. I share the content here as well and after any video gets uploaded, I also post updates on these platforms. So do follow me on these platforms so that you do not miss any update from me. And do subscribe to my YouTube channel. That is very important. Okay. So let's study about the general characteristics of bryophytes now. So regarding their habitat, habitat is where an organism lives. So as already mentioned, bryophytes are non-vascular terrestrial plants. They occur in damp, damp yani ki moist areas, humid, humid also means, damp means wet areas, humid is uh, where the air is humid, air is full of moisture and shaded localities, they like to grow in shaded areas. They form green carpets, in the image that you saw initially, they were forming green carpet, green colored uh, mats on the soil. So they form green carpets when they are going full fledgedly. They play an important role in plant succession, okay, on bare rocks or soil. What do bryophytes do? They are among the first organisms to colonize the bare rocks or the barren, uh, bare soil area, okay. Apart from lichens, which are considered the first colonizers, after lichens, bryophytes come into picture. Bryophytes come after lichens in the process of ecological succession. So they a play, play a very important role in plant succession. We will study about this in detail later on also. So hold on till then. Now if we talk about the structure of bryophytes, their plant body is more differentiated than that of algae. So algae were the lowermost level of uh, organism. Sabse niche wale level pe algae aare the. As we move, as we will move further in the forward direction, complexity badhti rahegi plants mein. ठीक है अब ब्रायोफाइट्स थोड़े से और कॉम्प्लेक्स हो गए टेरिडोफाइट्स इनसे ज्यादा कॉम्प्लेक्स हैं जिम्नोस्पर्म्स वुड इवन बी मोर कॉम्प्लेक्स एंड एंजियोस्पर्म्स सबसे ज्यादा कॉम्प्लेक्स होंगे सो ब्रायोफाइट्स आर मोर डिफरेंशिएटेड देन दैट द द प्लांट बॉडी ऑफ ब्रायोफाइट्स इज मोर डिफरेंशिएटेड देन दैट ऑफ एल्गी इट इज थैलस लाइक प्रोस्ट्रेट और इरेक्ट एलगी में वॉट डिड बी स्टडी एलगी आर थैलॉइड ऑर्गेनिजम सो ब्रायोफाइट में क्या होता है प्लांट बॉडी इज थैलस लाइक ओके दैट इज दे डू नॉट पोजेस वेल डिफरेंशिएटेड रूट स्टेम और लीव्स इट इज प्रोस्ट्रेट दैट इज अटैच टू द सर्फेस लाइक दिस एंड इट इज आइदर प्रोस्ट्रेट अटैच टू द सर्फेस लाइक दिस और इरेक्ट ओके इट इज आइदर स्टैंडिंग लाइक इरेक्ट और इट इज अटैच टू द सर्फेस हॉरिजोंटली इन द which is known as the prostrate uh, form of attachment. They lack true root stems or leaves, but they may possess root-like, leaf-like or stem-like structures. Although they lack true root stems and leaves, they can possess like structures, for, for example, root-like structures or stem-like structures, leaf-like structures, but they are not true root stem or leaves. They are attached to the substratum, the surface or the uh, rock or soil area, wherever they are going, they are attached to the surface. For example, this is a bryophyte. It is attached to the surface with the help of certain root-like structures which are known as rhizoids. These rhizoids can either be unicellular, okay, like this or multicellular, like this. Okay, so as you can see here, this is Marcantia, the image of Marcantia in these two images. Marcantia is a liver wart. So as you can see, it has a liver-like appearance and rhizoids are present here at the base for attaching it to the substratum on which it is growing. Then this is the antheridiophore. 
which bears the male sex organ. This is the archegoniophore, which bears the female sex organ. Okay, these are the gametophytic stages of Marcantia. This is the male thallus. And thridiophores bear the, bears the male sex organ and thridia. This is the female thal thallus. Archegoniophore bears the female sex organ, archegonia. Okay, these are the gamma cups which play a role in asexual reproduction because they produce gamma. We will study about this later on. This is funaria, which is the moss. Okay, funaria is a moss. So, this is the thallus of funaria. It has an erect thallus. So, see, this is a prostrate thallus. This is an erect thallus. This is an erect thallus. So, we studied either biophytes would either be prostrate or erect. So, see here. It is thallus like and prostrate or erect. So, this you can see here this is prostrate arrangement and this is the erect form. So, this part is the gametophyte of funaria and this part is the sporophyte of funaria. We will study about this in detail later on. Now, coming to reproduction in bryophytes, how do bryophytes reproduce? So, there are Main plant body is free living haploid that is it contains only one set of chromosomes that is n, n number of chromosomes and uh, it is a multicellular gametophyte. The gametophyte has more than one cell, it is a multicellular structure. In their main plant body is free living, okay, it, it can exist independently, it is not dependent on the sporophyte, it is free living and independent plant body. The sex organs are multicellular in bryophytes as well. The male sex organ is known as the antheridium as already told which produce biflagellate antherozoids. So, the antherozoids are biflagellated that means they contain two flagella, two flagella hote hai, antherozoids ke paas. Female sex organ is known as the archegonium. It is flask shaped. Thik hai, ye flask jaisa structure hota hai iska. Like this, the structure is like this okay it produce it contains a single egg okay it's so, bioflagellate antherozoids are present in uh, a huge number okay a lot of antherozoids are produced they are not sing just single not a single antherozoid is produced M more than one multiple number of antherozoids are produced in the antheridium the female sex organ produces only a single egg okay so, the, so, as already mentioned, water is very important for the bryophytes to reproduce sexually. So, this method here is showing the sexual reproduction in bryophytes, right? Because male and female sex organs, wherever these two mating types come together, obviously sexual reproduction is being talked about. So, water plays a very important role in sexual reproduction. Why? Because you will get to know the reason here. The, Biflagellate antherozoids that are produced, they need a medium to get transferred to the archegonium where the egg is present. So, in order to fuse with the egg, they need, they need to reach the egg. So, how do they reach the egg? Because if the plant body is dioecious, that is the male sex organ bearing thallus is different and the female sex organ bearing thallus is different. So, there would be need of a medium for the antherozoids to reach the female structure or the female sex organ and even in the monoecious structures where both the male and female sex organs are present on the same thallus also, there is a need for a medium to get for the male gametes to get transferred to the female gametes. So, that medium in bryophytes is the water. Okay. So, when biflagellate antherozoids reach the archegonium and enter it, they, there they will encounter the egg, they will find the egg there, they will fuse with the egg, okay, they will fuse with the egg and will form a zygote, okay, which is the product of fusion of male gamete and the female gamete. So, egg and anthrozoid fuse to form a zygote. A single anthrozoid will uh, fuse with the egg, which the anthrozoid which will reach first in the archegonium and at uh, will first find the egg, will fuse with it to form the zygote. Now, here it is the male thallus, this is the female thallus. 
Okay, so one very important distinction in Marcantia's male and female thallus is you can see that the antheridiophore, the upper structure here looks like this and in Archegoniophore, the upper structure here looks like this, umbrella shaped like of appearance. Okay, in the previous image also, it has an umbrella like appearance, the Archegoniophore. See, you can see at the top, whereas the Antheridiophore has this flat uh, a flat disc kind of structure. Okay, so please note this is also a very important distinguishing feature between uh, the male and female thallus. So as you can see here, uh, this is focusing here on the antheridium. So this is the antheridiophore which bears the antheridia. So if you zoom it, here you will find that this is the antherozoid, antherozoids which are present in the antheridia. Okay, a single antherozoid will further, if, if we further zoom this, will look like this. See, it is biflagellated, that is contains two flagella. This here, this structure is the antheridium, which is the male sex organ. Okay, it is the male sex organ. It bears the antherozoid, which are the male gametes, which is the male gamete. And ye kaisa hai? It is biflagellated, that is, it contains two flagella, and this whole structure is known as the antheridiophore. Antheridiophore, and this right here is the male thallus of Marcantia. Here it is the female thallus of Marcantia, it bears the Archegoniophore, Archegonio, Archegoniophore, which is the female sex organ bearing structure. So, it bears various Archegonia. A sing, uh, Archegonia is the plural form, just like Antheridia is the plural form, Antheridium is the singular form, and Archegonium is the singular form. So, as you can see here, this is the zoomed view of an Archegonia. See, you can see it is flask shaped in appearance. Okay. And it bears a single egg. So, the antherozoid will, this antherozoid will reach the archegonia via water, will enter it and will reach the egg to fuse with it in order to form a zygote. Okay. The medium would be water. So, uh, moving forward, the sporophyte here is diploid and multicellular. Sporophyte, jo hota hai, bryophytes ka, it is diploid, that is 2N and multicellular, that is it comprises more than one cell. It is not free living, but attached to the photosynthetic gametophyte and derives nourishment from it. So, jo sporophyte hota hai, it is not free living, it cannot exist independently as the gametophyte was existing. It is attached to the photosynthetic gametophyte, the gametophyte can synthesize its own food, Right, that is why it is known as photosynthetic gametophyte. So, the sporophyte is attached to the photosynthetic gametophyte in order to derive nourishment from it because the gametophyte is photosynthetic and prepare its own food. But the sporophyte is, is not free living, it is not independent, it cannot form its own food. So, in order to derive nourishment from the photosynthetic gametophyte, it remains attached to it. So, continuing from the cycle that we saw here. Okay, we ended at zygote. So, what happens after zygote formation? The zygote will develop into the sporophyte. Okay, the zygote will first form an embryo, then it will embryo will uh, further form the sporophyte, which is a multicellular structure. It will then undergo meiosis in order to form haploid spores. So, the sporophyte is diploid, the zygote is diploid, the haploid spores formed by meiosis are n in their ploidy levels. These haploid spores will germinate to form the gametophyte once again. Okay. So, one more point, very important point here. The spores formed in bryophytes, bryophytes are homosporous. Th that means similar kinds of spores are formed in bryophytes. All the spores are of similar type, they look same. In uh, further groups of organisms that we will study later on, we will find that heterosporous organisms are also there. 
for example some pteridophytes are heterosporous two different kinds of spores are produced but bryophytes are homosporous that is the spores produced all are of the same kind or the same type they look the same now uh, as you can see here this is the zygote okay this is the zygote here the zygote divides by mitosis in order to form an embryo the embryo will further form the sporophyte this is the sporophyte okay now this is the complete cycle here clubbing all the elements that we have studied up till now into this single image so this is the gametophyte bearing the archegoniophore here so after the fusion uh, with the anthrozoid of the egg cell zygote is formed zygote will develop into the embryo embryo will form the sporophyte so see the structure here it is the sporophyte the sporophyte will then undergo meiosis in order to form haploid spores which can also be called as meiospores the meiospores why are they called as meiospores because they are formed due to meiosis the meiospores will then germinate in order to form male thalli and female thalli respectively okay some of the spores will produce the male thallus and the, some of them will produce the female thallus depending upon the spore okay now economic importance of bryophytes now there is not much of economic importance of bryophytes but there are few uh, points that need to be told so some mosses they provide food for herbaceous mammals birds and other animals kuch aise mosses hote hain jo ki food ki tarah consume kar lete hain kuch herbaceous mammals kuch birds ya kuch alag kuch aur animals see as you can see in this picture this is a bird okay this is consuming a moss as you can see the bird is eating this moss so mosses some mosses act as food for uh, certain birds and herbaceous mammals or some other animals then species of sphagnum which is also known as cotton moss i'll tell you why they provide peat okay so th this here is known as peat now peat is something which has a high capacity to hold water okay and this peat this powdery substance is obtained from sphagnum this fibrous kind of substance brown colored is obtained from sphagnum it has long been used as fuel okay as packaging material for the transshipment of living material for example seedlings plant cuttings okay for the shipment of these materials water is required in order to keep them alive and moist moisture is required right so this moisture is provided by peat because peat has high water holding capacity so that is why peat is used for the packaging of these living materials okay so the peat is soaked in water and the these seedlings or uh, any plant cuttings or plant samples they are surrounded with peat so that they their uh, life duration their uh, they can look alive for longer periods of time okay they are, they remain preserved for longer periods of time because peat will be present around them so peat has high water holding capacity it would be able to retain the moisture around the plant cuttings for a longer amount of time so that is why it is used as a packing material for transshipment of living materials because of its capacity to hold hold water it is also used as a fuel okay it is also burned uh, a lot of times okay so that is uh, why it is also used as a fuel now why it is known as a cotton moss because cotton is also an absorbent of water right so it has replaced the role of cotton uh, for its capacity to hold water so now earlier people used to uh, use cotton but now sphagnum is used for the purpose of packing so that is why it is also known as the cotton moss now mosses along with lichens are the first organisms to colonize rocks as already told in the process of ecological succession mosses are uh, along with the lichens so lichens come first then mosses comes they are the first organisms to colonize the rocks hence they are of great ecological importance because they play such an important role in the process of ecological succession they decompose rocks making the substrate suitable for the growth of higher plants so what do they do 
they decompose the rocks. When they grow on the rocks, they uh, see first lichens are growing on the rocks. Okay, what do lichens do? They secrete certain acids which dissolve the rock material. Rock may have certain crevices form. Already, lichen may kya hota hai? Ek fungal component hota hai and ek algal component hota hai, right? Jo fungal hyphae hota hai, wo rock ke thin crevices may penetrate kar jate hai, okay? So, after they penetrate into the thin crevices of rocks, they also secrete certain acids, okay? Some lichens, they secrete acids, for example, or oxalic acid or an organic acid. So, ye kya karta hai ki, wo further un cracks ko expand kar deta hai. जो रॉक को जो सब्सटेंस सीमेंट करे हुए होते हैं वो रॉक के कंपोजिशन को डिसॉल्व कर देता है डिसॉल्व कर देता है रॉक को ओके सो उन क्रैक्स को फर्दर एक्सपैंड कर देता है एक सोइल का लेयर क्रिएट कर देता है बिकॉज़ ऑफ दिस डिसोल्यूशन ऑफ द रॉक मटेरियल फिर उसके बाद ये जो सरफेस है रॉक्स का उस पे थोड़ी सी पतली सी लेयर सोइल की एक्यूमुलेट होगी जिसकी वजह से इट गेट्स सूटेबल फॉर द ग्रोथ ऑफ ब्रायोफाइट्स नाउ so mosses अब आ जाते हैं mosses के लिए suitable होगे environment बहुत थोड़ा सा soil मिल गया उनको mosses जब grow करते हैं उस surface पे वो further rocks को decompose करते हैं ठीक है फिर mosses जब कुछ mosses जो होते हैं वो भी organic acids release कर देते हैं जिसकी वजह से rocks further जो हैं वो dissolve हो जाते हैं decompose हो जाते हैं rocks उसके बाद mosses की भी जब death होती है वो further soil uh, organic matter deposit कर देते हैं rock के ऊपर because जब death होगी वो उनका decay होगा decomposition होगा तो soil का layer जो है वो और बढ़ जाएगा फिर उसके बाद और plants आके उसको colonize करते रहेंगे so इस way में एक logical succession का process चलता रहता है okay so as you can see in this picture ये bare rocks हैं जिस पे mosses are growing see this is a bare rock lichens आके colonize करे then Mosses are so ye image moss kai moss colonizing a bare rock. So jab moss will die, they will form this layer of top soil on the rock. Fir uske baad grasses grow karengi. Fir grasses would be replaced by the shrubs. Then shrubs would further be replaced by the trees. Okay, so in this way the process of ecological succession will continue. Okay, so yaha pe mosses kya hote hai? Mosses mein एक प्रॉपर्टी होती है कि वो मिनरल्स और ऑर्गेनिक uh, मैटर को होल्ड कर लेते हैं उसकी वजह से भी ये जो सोइल है वो उसके फॉर्मेशन में कंट्रीब्यूट करते हैं नाउ मॉसेस जो है वो डेंस मैट्स दे फॉर्म ऑन द सोइल हेंस दे रिड्यूस द इंपैक्ट ऑफ फॉलिंग रेन ओके दे फॉर्म डेंस मैट्स ऑन द सोइल एज यू कैन सी इन दिस पिक्चर दे आर कवरिंग द होल एरिया ओके ये डेंस मैट फॉर्म कर लेते हैं सोइल पे तो इसकी वजह से क्या होता है जो सोइल है वो होल्ड करके रखते हैं वो सोइल को जिसकी वजह से जो रेनफॉल हो रही है उसका इंपैक्ट जो होता है वो बहुत रिड्यूस हो जाता है वो सोइल को डिस्प्लेस नहीं कर पाती रेन इजीली सो इट अल्टीमेटली प्रिवेंट्स द सोइल इरोजन सो इनका बहुत ज्यादा इकोलॉजिकल इंपॉर्टेंस है नाउ ब्रायोफाइट्स इज ऑलरेडी टोल्ड आर डिवाइडेड इनटू लिवरवर्ड्स एंड मॉसेस ओके वी विल स्टार्ट ऑफ विद द लिवरवर्ड्स लिवरवर्ड्स दे यूजुअली ग्रो इन द मॉइस्ट शेडी हैबिटेट्स एज ऑलरेडी टोल्ड ऑल ब्रायोफाइट्स ग्रो इन मॉइस्ट शेडी हैबिटेट्स for example banks of streams ek stream flow kar rahi hai uska jo bank area hota hai na side mein wahan pe liverworts grow kare hue paaye jate hain marshy grounds pe they can be seen growing on the damp soil the wet soil bark of trees deep in the woods so all these areas you can see liverworts growing we are talking about liverworts here okay so liverworts can be seen growing in all these areas so see this is the structure of a liverwort as already seen so the plant body is thalloid okay they have root uh, they do not can possess true root stem or leaves only stem like root like and leaf like structures the thallus is dors dorsi ventral closely attached to the substrate so the thallus is closely attached to the substratum it is dorsi ventral the leafy members have tiny leaf like appendages in two rows on the stem like structures now kuch leafy liverworts bhi hote hain जिनमें लीव्स थोड़ी प्रोमिनेंटली अपीयर करती हैं, फॉर एग्जांपल इन दिस इमेज एज यू कैन सी दिस इज अ लीफी लेवर वॉट इसमें आपको प्रॉपरली लीव्स दिख रही हैं, लीफ लाइक अपेंडेजेस दिख रही हैं। दे आर ग्रोइंग इन टू रोज दिस इज वन रो दिस इज द सेकेंड रो ओके सो द लीफी मेंबर्स आर टाइनी लीफ लाइक अपेंडेजेस इन टू रोज ऑन द स्टेम लाइक स्ट्रक्चर दिस इज द स्टेम इन द सेंटर एंड दीज आर द लीफ लाइक अपेंडेजेस दैट आर ग्रोइंग ऑन द साइड इन टू रोज रो वन एंड रो टू and in the center this vertical line here represents the stem uh, this is a more zoomed in image 
so this area is the stem area and these are the leaf like appendages these appendages they are growing in two rows row number 1 and row number 2 okay so reproduction in liverworts is asexual or sexual it is of two types it can be asexual uh, they can reproduce asexually also and sexually also asexual mode of reproduction is by fragmentation of the thallus uh, or by the formation of gamete so we are uh, i told you that we will study about gamete later on here we will uh, we are going to study about it and sexual reproduction is by the fusion of gametes you already have a general idea of how bryophytes reproduce sexually so gamete are green multicellular asexual buds okay they develop in small receptacles called gamma cups which are located on the thalli so these uh, structures these circular structures cup like structures are known as gamma cups har ek gamma cup ke andar green color ke multicellular buds hote hain jinko hum asexual buds bhi bolte hain theek hai ye gamma cups which are small receptacles inke andar present hai to ye jo structures hain ye sare ye ये 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 सारे रिप्रेजेंट कर रहे हैं हमारे गेमे ओके सो गेमे आर द ग्रीन मल्टी सेलुलर एसेक्शुअल बर्ड विच डेवलप इन साइड द गेमा कप्स एंड दी गेमा कप्स कहा प्रेजेंट है थैलस पे ऐसे अटैच रहते हैं सो वॉट हैपन्स इज गेमे जो है इन ऑर्डर फॉर इन ऑर्डर फॉर द लिवर वर्ड टू रिप्रोड्यूस ए सेक्शुअली जो गेमे है वेन दे मेच्योर दे बिकम डिटैच फ्रॉम द पेरेंट बॉडी ठीक है आइदर वॉटर की वजह से कुछ रेनफॉल के इम्पैक्ट की वजह से जो है वो डिसोशिएट हो जाते हैं गेमा कप्स में से डिटैच हो जाते हैं प्लांट बॉडी से एंड वेन एवर दैंड ऑन सुटेबल सबस्ट्रेटम दे आर एबल टू जर्मिनेट टू फॉर्म न्यू इंडिविजुअल्स ठीक है वो नया थैलस नया गेमिटो फाइट फॉर्म करने के लिए केपेबल होते हैं सो दिस इज द गेमा फॉर्मेशन एंड दिस इज हाउ द लिवर वॉर्ड्स आर रिप्रोड्यूसिंग बाय द गेमे विच इज द टाइप ऑफ विच इज अ मोड ऑफ ए सेक्शुअल रिप्रोडक्शन इन लिवर वॉर्ड so this is the fragmentation of thallus happening here a part of the thallus here breaks okay this uh, part of the thallus is capable of giving rise to a completely new thallus once again when it uh, attaches itself to a substratum this looks identical to it the parent thallus because and here also whatever uh, plant body would be formed by the gamete would be identical to the parent plant body because the asexual reproduction mein genetically identical rehta hai जो डॉटर ऑर्गेनिज्म होता है पेरेंट ऑर्गेनिज्म से ओके नाउ कमिंग टू सेक्सुअल रिप्रोडक्शन इन लेवर वर्ड द मेल एंड फीमेल सेक्स ऑर्गन दे आर आइदर प्रोड्यूस्ड ऑन द सेम और ऑन द डिफरेंट थैलाय ओके या तो मोनोशियस हो सकते हैं और सेम थैलाय पे दोनों सेक्स ऑर्गन प्रेजेंट रह सकते हैं या वो डायोशियस हो सकते हैं और डिफरेंट थैलाय पे मेल एंड फीमेल सेक्स ऑर्गन प्रेजेंट रह सकते हैं यहाँ पे डायोशियस कंडीशन दिखाई है मेल थैलस अलग है फीमेल थैलस अलग है The sporophyte is differentiated into a foot, theta and capsule. See, यहाँ पे जो sporophyte जब form होगा उसके certain parts होते हैं okay? This is the foot area, जहां से वो attached होता है gametophyte पे फिर सीटा area, ये जो stalk like structure है फिर capsule है जहां पे spores present होते हैं तो ये एक general sporophyte का structure है ऑफ लेवर वर्ल्ड देन वॉट हैपन्स आफ्टर मियोसिस द स्पोर्स आर प्रोड्यूस्ड विद इन द कैप्स्यूल एंड these spores when they are dispersed they are capable of giving rise to free living gametophytes once again male thallus or female thallus wo fir se form kar sakte hain spores after they undergo after the capsule in the capsule meiosis occurs various spores are produced and the spores are capable of giving rise to the female thallus male thallus or the female thallus depending upon the spore okay so in this image what is happening is in the male thallus Uh, the antheridia is released and it travels by a water to reach the female thallus it reaches the archegonium then it reaches the egg cell it fuses with the egg to form the zygote zygote forms the embryo embryo for the forms the sporophyte and the sporophyte meiosis occurs Meo after meiosis haploid spores or meiospores are formed the meiospores will give rise to the male thallus or the female thallus depending upon the type of the meiospore so Inside the capsule of some liverworts, that is, for example, consider Marchantia, specialized cells known as elaters are present. Okay, कुछ liverworts के capsule में कुछ specialized cells cells present होते हैं जिनको हम elaters बोलते हैं. तो ये आप देखो ये Marchantia के sporophyte का structure है. This is the foot area. 
by which it is attached to the gametophyte. This is the seta area or the stalk like area, stalk like structure. And then this is the capsule area, jahan pe spores present. Hote so, along with spores, kuch ye certain longitudinal structures dikh rahe. These structures are known as elators. These elators are hygroscopic, that is water absorbing, they can absorb water. Okay, water absorb karenge, pressure create hoga, jiske wajah se spore dispersal mein help hota hai. So, these cells are water absorbing and they help in the spore dispersal. So, Rixia ho gaya, one of the common liverworts, then the, this is Marcantia. So, these are very famous liverworts. So, two examples are mentioned here. See, Rixia also looks, has a shape similar to Marcantia, a liver-like appearance. That is why the name liverworts is given to them. Coming to mosses. Now, mosses usually grow in moist shady habitats as all bryophytes again, such as banks of streams, marshy ground, damp soil, bark of trees, deep in the woods. Okay. So, similar to liverworts, they are also growing in all the same areas as liverworts were growing. So, this is how mosses look like. Okay. They have an erect thallus. Liverworts mostly have a prostrate kind of thallus and mosses have an erect thallus. The predominant stage of the life cycle of a moss is the gametophyte. So, bryophytes mein jo predominant stage hota hai, it is a gametophyte which consists of two stages. Okay, first stage is the protonema stage which develops directly from the spore. The spores that are produced from the, that are released from the capsule, they are capable, uh, they germinate directly to give rise to the first stage of the life cycle of a moss, which is the protonema stage. Now, protonema stage, kaisa dikta hai? It is a creeping, green colored, branched and frequently filamentous stage. This stage mein kaisa dikta hai? Moss ek filamentous thread like structure ki tarah dikta hai. Protonema stage bhi do mein divided hoti hai. Primary protonema and secondary protonema. And iske baad aata hai hamara second stage that is the leafy stage. Jo leafy stage hoti hai, it develops directly from the secondary protonema as a lateral bud. So, jo thread like structures form hoti hai hamare primary protonema mein. Uske baad hamara secondary protonema form hoti hai. Secondary protonema jo hoti hai, wo miniature moss ki tarah lagta hai. Usme thodi se leaf like structures bhi aa jate hai. Thik hai? फिर इस लीफी स्टेज में फर्दर लेटरल बड्स प्रोड्यूस होंगे ठीक है एंड एक मैच्योर मॉस बन जाएगा जिसमें प्रॉपर लीफ लाइक स्ट्रक्चर्स अब आपको दिखेंगे मैच्योर मॉस प्लांट दिखेगा सो दिस इज द लीफी स्टेज सो प्राइमरी प्रोटोनेमा सेकेंडरी प्रोटोनेमा स्टेज एंड द लीफी स्टेज सो लीफी स्टेज डेवलप्स डायरेक्टली फ्रॉम द सेकेंडरी प्रोटोनेमा एज अ लेटरल बड सो एक लेटरली साइड में एक बड फॉर्म होता है जिससे ये फर्दर आउटग्रोथ्स निकल के लीफी स्टेज बन जाता है विच इज द मेच्योर मॉस स्टेज द कंसिस्ट ऑफ अपराइट स्लेंडर एक्सिस बियरिंग स्पाइरली अरेंज लीव सी अपराइट है ना एक्सिस स्ट्रेट एक्सिस वर्टिकल इरेक्ट एक्सिस विच बियर स्पाइरली अरेंज लीव दे आर अटैच टू द सॉइल थ्रू मल्टी सेलुलर एंड ब्रांच राइजॉइड राइजॉइड्स कौन से होंगे यहाँ पे इस केस में मल्टी सेलुलर और ब्रांच राइजॉइड से ये सॉइल पे अटैच होते हैं ठीक है मल्टी सेलुलर होते हैं राइजोइड और ब्रांच होते हैं दिस स्टेज बियर्स द सेक्स ऑर्गन ये लीफी स्टेज में हमें सेक्स ऑर्गन देखने को मिलते हैं द मेल एंड फीमेल सेक्स ऑर्गन अब इसको हम अच्छे से पिक्चर के फॉर्म में देखते हैं यहाँ पे सो दिस इज द प्राइमरी प्रोटोनीमा स्टेज ठीक है राइट हेयर सी थ्रेड लाइक क्रीपिंग क्रीपिंग क्या होता है इसे ग्राउंड पे क्रॉल करता हुआ एक फिलोमेंटस थ्रेड लाइक स्ट्रक्चर ओके फिर उसके बाद आते हैं हमारा सेकेंडरी प्रोटोनेमा विच लुक्स लाइक मिनीचर मॉस प्लांट्स इसमें क्या होता है थोड़ी थोड़ी हमें लीफ लाइक स्ट्रक्चर्स देखने को मिल जाते हैं विच आर नॉट फुली ग्रोन बट एक छोटे छोटे स्ट्रक्चर्स देखने को मिल जाते हैं हमें लीफ के इमर्जिंग गेमिटोफाइड देखने को मिल जाते हैं ये अल्टीमेटली जाके ये लीफ लाइक स्ट्रक्चर्स क्या बनाएंगे गेमिटोफाइड बियर करेंगे राइट तो इनके जस्ट बिगनिंग ऑफ ग्रोथ के स्टेजेस हमें यहाँ पे देखने को मिल जाते हैं यहाँ पे सी मल्टी सेलुलर एंड ब्रांच राइजोइड प्रेजेंट है जब ये फर्दर मेच्योर होगा एंड और ग्रो करेगा ये प्रॉपर लीफी स्टेज है इसको लीफी गेमिटोफोर स्टेज भी बोलते हैं क्योंकि यहाँ पे गेमिटोफाइड्स भी आ जाते हैं 
ठीक है सो ये हो गई हमारी लीफी आउटग्रोथ इस पे हमारा प्रेजेंट है फीमेल गेमिटोफाइट इस वाले ब्रांच पे प्रेजेंट है हमारा मेल गेमिटोफाइट ओके सो ये जो कैप्सूल में से स्पोर्स प्रोड्यूस हुए स्पोर ने प्रोड्यूस करा प्राइमरी प्रोटोनीमा प्राइमरी प्रोटोनीमा से हमारा फॉर्म हुआ सेकेंडरी प्रोटोनीमा एंड सेकेंडरी प्रोटोनीमा से हमें अपना मिला लीपी स्टेज विच इज द मेच्योर मॉस प्लांट मेच्योर गेमिटोफाइट ये पूरा ही गेमिटोफाइट फॉर्म हो रहा है स्पोर से ये भी गेमिटोफाइट है ये भी और ये भी बट दिस इज द मेच्योर गेमिटोफाइट जिसमें हमें प्रॉपरली अब फीमेल सेक्स ऑर्गन डेवलप हो चुके हैं मेल गेमिटोफाइट में मेल सेक्स ऑर्गन डेवलप हो गए ओके नाउ रिप्रोडक्शन इन मॉसेस वाया द वेजिटेटिव रिप्रोडक्शन मेथड इज आइदर बाय फ्रेगमेंटेशन और बर्डिंग इन द सेकेंडरी प्रोटोनीमा ठीक है तो सेकेंड uh, ये वेजिटेटिव रिप्रोडक्शन हाउ इज इज इट हैपनिंग इन द मॉसेस आइदर बाय फ्रेगमेंटेशन एज सीन इन लिवरवर्ड्स ऑल्सो थैलसोटेड पोर्शन ऑफ द थैलस विल ब्रेक ऑफ एंड इज केपेबल ऑफ गिविंग राइस टू अव थैलस सो आइदर by this method of vegetative reproduction that is fragmentation the mosses can reproduce or via the second mode of vegetative reproduction is budding in the secondary protonema jo miniature moss stage hai okay in which uh, certain leaf like structures are just beginning to appear in that stage budding via budding see certain buds are formed and these buds are capable of giving rise to a complete new thallus so this is uh, another method of vegetative reproduction budding in secondary protonema now coming to sexual reproduction in mosses in sexual reproduction the sex organs anthridia and archegonia are produced as at the apex of the leafy shoots okay what happens is sex organs anthridia anthridial head see here and the archegonial head here they bear the anthridia and archegonia respectively so these sex organs are produced at the apex of the leafy shoots see archegonial head is here this is the stem anthridial head stem leaves rhizoids okay now after fertilization the zygote develops into a sporophyte consisting of a foot seta and capsule as you can see here this is funaria which is a moss we have already seen the image of funaria before but let's see it again here in context of its structure so it comprises of a capsule seta and foot this is the sporophyte okay zygote jo hai after fertilization of the male and female gametes zygote is formed right the zygote will develop into a sporophyte now sporophyte kaisa dikhta hai yahan pe sporophyte ke kya teen parts hote hain yahan pe jaise liverworts mein teen parts the foot seta and capsule wahan pe bhi humne dekha few uh, yahan pe mosses mein bhi teen parts hote hain sporophyte ke foot seta and capsule सो यहाँ पे फुट नहीं दिख रहा बिकॉज इट इज हिडन इन द गेमिटोफाइट बट यहाँ पे फुट लाइक स्ट्रक्चर होता है जिसकी वजह से अटैच है गेमिटोफाइट पे ये स्पोरोफाइट राइट दिस इज द स्पोरोफाइट एंड दिस इज द गेमिटोफाइट द लीफी शूट इट देन बियर्स द स्पोरोफाइट आफ्टर द जायगोट जर्मिनेट एंड फॉर्म्स द स्पोरोफाइट जायगोट विल फर्स्ट फॉर्म एन एम्प्रियो देन द स्पोरोफाइट सो द स्पोरोफाइट कंप्राइज ऑफ अ कैप्स्यूल विच इज प्रेजेंट एट द टिप एंड इट विल बियर द हेप्लॉइड स्पोर्स विच आर again capable of giving rise to the female and the male gametophytes or the gametophytes because mosses are moss in mosses the gametophyte is monoecious Mo male and female sex organs ek hi thallus pe present rehte hain jabki liverworts mein kya hote hain they are mostly dioecious male and female sex organs different thallus pe present hote hain okay aur, aur mosses mein kya hota hai halaki ye monoecious hote hain par ब्रांचेस अलग अलग होती हैं जिनपे मेल एंड फीमेल सेक्स ऑर्गन प्रेजेंट है एक ही थैलस में प्रेजेंट रहेंगे बट ऑन डिफरेंट ब्रांचेस मेल सेक्स ऑर्गन बियरिंग ब्रांच वुड बी डिफरेंट एंड द फीमेल सेक्स ऑर्गन बियरिंग ब्रांच वुड बी डिफरेंट ओके एंड मेजोरिटी ऑफ द लिवर वर्ड्स दे आर डायोशियस मेजोरिटी ऑफ द मॉसेज आर मोनोशियस सो दिस वॉज द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ फ्यून एरिया दिस इज द गेमिटोफाइड दिस इज द मेन एक्सेस एंड दीज आर द राइजॉइड हेयर the sporophyte in mosses is more elaborate than that in liverworts very important point to note here jo sporophyte hota hai mosses ka it is more elaborate and complex than the sporophyte of the liverworts the capsule contains spores which are formed after meiosis meiosis ke baad spores form honge right haploid spores or neospores bhi bolte hain jinko hum the mosses they have an elaborate mechanism of spore dispersal inka kafi ek proper elaborate detailed mechanism hai 
स्पोर डिस्पोर्सल का उसके डिटेल्स में हम नहीं जाएंगे अभी बिकॉज ये एनसीआर के बाहर हो जाएगा ओके सो वी विल बी रिस्ट्रिक्टेड टू दिस इन्फॉर्मेशन ओनली हियर सो दिस इज द लाइफ साइकिल ऑफ फ्यूनेरिया एक ओवरऑल लाइफ साइकिल दिखा रखी है इस इमेज में नंबर वन पॉइंट पे अगर हम जाए तो दिस इज द गेमिटोफाइट द मेल एंड फीमेल ब्रांच आर शोन हियर सो एंथरीडिया एट द टिप ऑफ द गेमिटोफाइट शूट हेयर इज प्रेजेंट दिस इज द मेल गेमिटोफाइट ये लीफी शूट है जिसके टिप पे हमारा प्रेजेंट है एंथरीडिया ठीक है एंथरीडिया एट द टिप ऑफ द गेमिटोफाइट शूट ये एंथरीडिया जो है यहाँ पे प्रेजेंट है स्ट्रक्चर में इन लीफी शूट्स के सेंटर में यहाँ पे एंथरीडिया देखने को मिल रहा है ये जो दिख रहे हैं ना स्ट्रक्चर दिस इज दी एंथरीडिया दे कंटेन द स्मॉम सेल्स जब ये डिस्पर्स हो जाएंगे यहाँ पे देखो ये फीमेल गेमिटोफाइट है ठीक है यहाँ पे आर की गोनिया प्रेजेंट है बहुत सारे जिनमें एक्सेल्स प्रेजेंट है सो ये एंथरीडिया विल फ्यूज विद दी आर की गोनिया फर्टिलाइजेशन होगी जायगोड बनेगा जायगोड से एमडियो बनेगा The embryo will give rise to the sporophyte. This is the gametophyte. इसके टॉप पे हमारा निकल गया स्पोरोफाइट द स्पोरोफाइट के कैप्स्यूल में क्या होगा मियोसिस होगा मियोसिस यहाँ पे स्पेलिंग एन ओ यू एस होना चाहिए ओके तो अब क्या होगा जब स्पोर्स प्रोड्यूस होगा ये स्पोर्स जो है स्पोरोजेन सेल्स दैट अंडर गो मियोसिस मियोसिस हुआ है यहाँ पे ओके फिर ये जो स्पोर्स फॉर्म हुए मियोसिस के बाद हेप्लॉइड स्पोर्स आर फॉर्म राइट सो दी स्पोर्स आर रिलीज दे जोमिनेट टू फॉर्म प्रोटोनेमा सो क्या पढ़ा था हमने फर्स्ट स्टेज क्या होगी मोसिस में द स्पोर डायरेक्टली जोमिनेट्स टू गिव राइज टू द प्राइमरी प्रोटोनेमा सो ये प्राइमरी प्रोटोनेमा है जिसको गिव राइज करा है स्पोर ने फिर इस पर बर्ड्स फॉर्म होंगे सेकेंडरी प्रोटोनेमा फॉर्म हुआ फिर फर्दर जो फर्दर क्या फॉर्म हुआ हमारा लीफी स्टेज कैसे फॉर्म हुआ पहले प्राइमरी प्रोटोनीमा था प्राइमरी प्रोटोनेमा पे लीफ लाइक स्ट्रक्चर आए सेकेंडरी प्रोटोनेमा बना सेकेंडरी प्रोटोनेमा पे ले बर्ड्स लेटरल बर्ड्स ग्रो करे जिनसे ये गेमिटोफाइट आर फॉर्म सो ये है हमारा लीफी स्टेज सो इस वे में ये लाइफ साइकिल ऑफ फ्यूनेरिया हमें देखने को मिलती है ओके नाउ सम ऑफ द कॉमन मॉसिस आर फ्यूनेरिया सी यहाँ पे कैप्स्यूल है ये सीटा है फिर फुट है ये हमारा गेमिटोफाइट है ओके दिस इज पॉलीट्राइकम इसमें भी सिमिलर स्ट्रक्चर आपको देखने को मिल रहा है कैप्स्यूल देन सीटा देन फुट और ये जो ग्रीन कलर स्ट्रक्चर है ये गेमिटोफाइट ओके स्पैगनम इज वन ऑफ द मॉसिस ये स्पैगनम का इमेज है स्पैगनम सी एंड थ्रीडियल ब्रांचेस देयर दीज आर ऑल द ब्रांचेस ऑफ स्पैगनम सी इरेक्ट थैलिस यहाँ पे मॉसिस का मोस्टली इरेक्ट होता है थैलिस दिस इज द आर्कीगोनियल ब्रांच ठीक है दिस इज द आर्कीगोनियल ब्रांच दिस इज द एंथरीडियल ब्रांच ओके तो एंथेलिस क्या है मोनोशियस है यहां पे बट ब्रांचेस अलग है ओके सो मोनोशियस थैलिस होता है मोस्टली मोसिस में बट ब्रांचेस आर डिफरेंट जहां पे एंथरीडियल ब्रांच अलग होगा आर्कीगोनिया बियरिंग ब्रांच अलग होगी सो दिस वॉज अबाउट स्पैगनम और ये गेमिटोफाइट है स्पैगनम का तभी तो यहाँ पे एंथरीडियल ब्रांच और आर्कीगोनियल ब्रांच विच इज द मेल एंड फीमेल फिक्स ऑर्गन बियरिंग ब्रांच रिस्पेक्टिवली इज बींग शोन राइट Now let's come to the NEET PYQs. So pay attention here. Very important from NEET 2023, the first stage of the gametophyte in the life cycle of moss is the protonema stage. This is the assertion. Reason is given that protonema develops directly from the spores produced in the capsule. So we have to, uh, from all of these four options, we have to mark the correct one. So is the assertion true? Tell me. The first stage of the gametophyte. In the life cycle of moss is the protonema stage. Just abhi hi pada humne that the in mosses the first stage is the protonema stage in which what happens the spore from the capsule directly gives rise to a filamentous thread like creeping green kind of structure which is known as the primary protonema which will give for the give rise to the secondary protonema. So yes, the first stage of the gametophyte in the life cycle of moss is the protonema stage. The assertion is correct. so is the reason supporting this assertion that protonema develops directly from spores produced in the capsule just now i told you in the explanation that protonema develops directly from the spores that are produced in the capsule so the capsule is a part of the sporophyte okay it bears the spores okay after it undergoes meiosis certain cells in the capsule or the sporophyte undergoes meiosis in order to form haploid spores or meiospores within the capsule 
these pores when they are dispersed and, and come in contact with the suitable substratum they give rise to the protonema stage in the mosses okay so a both uh, if a is uh, option one is saying a is not correct but r is correct this is wrong because both a and r are correct so option 2 can be considered but r is the and r is the correct explanation of assertion so yes this statement is true and this is a correct answer statement c saying both a and r are correct but r is the is not the correct explanation of a this statement is again wrong because a and r both are correct and r is the correct explanation of assertion a is correct but r is not correct this again option is wrong so the correct answer to this question is option number b zygotic meiosis is characteristic of zygotic meiosis kya hota hai jab zygote form hota hai after the fusion of male and female gamete it it uh, immediately undergoes meiosis theek hai ye wait nahi karta embryo banane ka ye two in stage bana ab meiosis se ultimately isne spore form kar liye in immediately koi diploid stage ko stay karne ka time hi nahi mila zygote is a single cell right it gives rise uh, it undergoes meiosis in order to give rise to haploid spores immediately koi sporophyte stage stay nahi kar rahi to ye zygotic meiosis jo hai kiska characteristic hai markantia ka hai fucus ka hai cunearia kya hai ya clematomonas ka hai to markantia to hamara bryophyte hai cunearia bhi hamara bryophyte hai markantia liver bot hai cunearia moss hai तो इन दोनों में तो हमें जाइगोटिक मियोसिस देखने को नहीं मिलता बिकॉज दोनों में ही एम्ब्रियो फॉर्मेशन होता है एंड प्रॉपर स्पोरोफाइट जो कि मल्टी सेलुलर होता है वो फॉर्म होता है इसमें ऐसा नहीं है कि जाइगोट ने इमिजिएटली मियोसिस कर लिया प्रॉपर स्पोरोफाइट इज बींग फॉर्म एंड सर्टिन सेल्स ऑफ द स्पोरोफाइट विल देन अंडर गो मियोसिस इन ऑर्डर टू फॉर्म हैड स्पोर्ट्स विच आर देन डिस्पोज इन ऑर्डर टू गिव राइज टू द गेमिटोफाइट सो बोथ ऑफ दीज ऑप्शन वुड बी इन करेक्ट ऑटोमेटिकली नो फ्यूकस एंड क्लेमाइडोमोना हेयर आर एलगी फ्यूकस इज द ब्राउन एलगी क्लेमाइटोमोनास इज द ग्रीन एलगी तो फ्यूकस में भी डायगोटिक मियोसिस देखने को नहीं मिलता क्योंकि फ्यूकस में भी जो स्पोरोफाइट होता है वो मल्टी सेलुलर होता है ठीक है इमीजिएटली वो जाइगोट जो है मियोसिस नहीं करता जाइगोट एम्ब्रियो बनाता है एम्ब्रियो से स्पोरोफाइट बनता है एंड स्पोरोफाइट जो होता है वो डोमिनेंट स्टेज होती है फ्यूकस में ज्यादा टाइम के लिए स्टे करती है इट इज द मेन स्टेज इन फ्यूकस तभी फ्यूकस का लाइफ साइकिल डिप्लॉन्टिक होता है क्योंकि ज्यादा ड्यूरेशन के लिए स्पोरोफाइट स्टेज इज बींग सीन ठीक है स्पोरोफाइट स्टेज इज द मेन स्टेज इन फ्यूकस क्लेमाइडोमोनास इज द राइट आंसर क्योंकि क्लेमाइडोमोनास में क्या होता है जो जाइगोट होता है वो इमिजिएटली मियोसिस अंडरगो कर लेता है सो इट इज ऑल्सो वन ऑफ द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक फीचर्स ऑफ क्लेमाइडोमोनास अगर आप इस डायग्राम में देखोगे फ्रॉम द प्रीवियस लेक्चर मैंने ये स्लाइड लिया है तो यहाँ पे जाइगोट बना आफ्टर फ्यूजन ऑफ मेल एंड फीमेल के मीट इमिजिएटली इसने मियोसिस अंडर गो कर लिया सो दिस इज जाइगोटिक मियोसिस एंड मियोसिस अंडर गो करने के बाद बने हमारे जू स्पोर्ट्स विच आर केपेबल ऑफ गिविंग राइस टू न्यू क्लेमाइटोमोनास वंस अगेन ओके सो हिंस द करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन नंबर डी क्लेमाइटोमोनास Now, need 2016 का क्वेश्चन है इन ब्रायोफाइट्स इन टेरिडोफाइट ट्रांसफर ऑफ मेल गेमीट रिक्वायर्स तो स्टार्टिंग में ही बता दिया था टेरिडोफाइट्स तो हमने अभी नहीं पढ़ा है बट ब्रायोफाइट्स में ही क्या बताया था स्टार्टिंग में दे आर कॉल्ड द एम्फीबियन ऑफ प्लान किंगडम बिकॉज दे कैन लिव ऑन द सॉइल दैट इज दे कैन लिव ऑन द लैंड बट दे नीड वॉटर फॉर द प्रोसेस ऑफ सेक्शुअल रिप्रोडक्शन तो वॉटर इनके लिए इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इन ऑर्डर टू फॉर देम टू रिप्रोड्यूस सेक्शुअली क्योंकि मेल गेमीट फीमेल सेक्स ऑर्गन और फीमेल के मीट तक कैसे पहुंचता है किस मीडियम के थ्रू पहुंचता है वाटर से पहुंचता है सो द करेक्ट आंसर एयर इज ऑप्शन नंबर डी एंड टेडिडोफाइट में भी सेम वाटर का इंपॉर्टेंट रोल होता है फॉर द ट्रांसपोर्ट ऑफ मेल के मीट वी विल स्टडी दैट इन डिटेल इन टेडिडोफाइट सो द करेक्ट आंसर एयर इज ऑप्शन नंबर डी वॉटर विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर पीट फॉर्मेशन क्या पढ़ा था हमने स्पैगनम इकोनॉमिक इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ ब्रायोफाइट में भी स्टडी दैट Sphagnum, which is also known as cotton moss, it is responsible for peat formation. Peat का क्या role होता है? It is also used as a fuel. It is also used in packing and shipment of living or uh, living materials, living plant materials. For example, seedlings and plant cuttings because it has high water holding capacity. So यहाँ पे correct answer हो गया हमारा D. Option number A, C and D are incorrect. So peat formation के लिए sphagnum is responsible. 
Now, this question is from NEET 2013. Read the following statements and answer the questions which follow. In liverworts, mosses and ferns, ferns are pteridophytes. Gametophytes are free living. Is this statement correct? First, let us look at the other statements as well. Gymnosperms and some ferns are heterosporous. Sexual reproduction in fucus and volvogs is oogamous. The sporophyte in liverworts is more elaborate than that in mosses. So, is this a consa statement galat hai? The only statement which is wrong is option number 4. Because we just we have studied that mosses have a more elaborate and complex sporophyte than liverworts, and in case spore dispersal mechanism is also more elaborate than uh, than uh, that that is present in liverworts. Sexual reproduction, fucus and volvox, dono mein hi oogamous hoti hai. This is correct. Gymnosperms and some ferns are heterosporous. I have just told you that bryophytes are homosporous. Okay, same type of same kind of spores are formed. एक जैसे दिखते हैं वो but gymnosperms and some ferns में different two different kinds of spores are produced that is why they are known as heterosporous liverworts mosses and ferns में gametophytes are free living that is true क्या पढ़ा हमने अभी bryophytes में that their gametophytes are free living and independent and sporophyte is dependent upon the gametophyte so liverworts mosses ferns pteridophytes में भी gametophytes are free living so ये तीनों ही statements हमारी correct हो जाती हैं तो how many statements of the above are correct? Three statements are correct. One, two and three. So, the correct answer would be option number C, three. Okay. So, that is all for today's video students. Thank you for watching this video till the end. See you in the next video. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any feedback and suggestions or if you found something useful, do let me know in the comments below and like this video. Definitely share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.